Oh, see, that's that sinking issue I was talking about. For you live viewers, for the second time, greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Syncing up cameras is not easy, asked Christelle. Sam I B. Deganji reporting for the media speaks. Uh, like, there's nothing Thanks, that sinks it. <laughs> you can always count on me. Um, I moved the microphone up here because I wanted to keep it off camera and oh so professional. But I keep, I fidget too much. I keep bumping it so that you can see the mic. Um, I, before I get into my main story, I want to talk about this jerk in Santa Barbara that did all the shooting. Because there was a rather substantial misunderstanding regarding the way that that story went down. And uh, for, for you regular viewers that follow the show, you'll be interested in this. For those of you that don't, skip ahead 30 seconds. Um, my girlfriend... It had a toothache during our visit to Cedar Point, our first visit of the year to our amusement park that we love. On the way home, the now legendary Casper that was appearing in uh, Becoming Paul Revere threw not run but one but two rods. It sounded like a near Neil Pert solo. Got it told home. My mom gets sepsis. It's a blood disease. She's gonna be fine, thankfully. Then I find out that the show that I covered this little bastard on got 22,000 hits and most people disliked it because they thought that we were mocking the tragedy. This has been the first time that I've been on air so, since it happened and I need you to watch it again and I need you to pretend that you're us. This thing is just breaking as we go live. Kyle and I had never even heard of the story before. D-Lake brings it to us, and we talked about it because that's what the Saturday edition is. You're not going to get news on anywhere, any other, anywhere else. We didn't think it was real because this little prick sounded like he was being overly dramatic. And I think he's human scum. I don't think the world's a worse place without him. But because we made fun of his video people thought that we weren't taking the disaster seriously. And that's very easy to go ahead and rewind time and say, well, look what they were making fun of. I'm sorry. He was a swine. He was an awful person. He killed innocent people. And I'm not sorry that I made fun of him. Um, if anyone found disrespect to the victims because we didn't think a story was real, there's something wrong with your thinking. The two are not related. I want to get into something else, too, since we've already started on such a popular foot with this story. Um, the facts regarding this. If anyone says that I'm blaming the victim, I'm not even going to answer your reply. Do you understand me? I'm not even going to answer your reply or your comment with a reply. I am not in favor of what he did in any way, shape, matter, or form. What I'm saying, or rather, is... He was a psychopathic person. He was an unstable person. It seems here that a number of women throughout his life, especially in his formative teenage years, were absolutely dreadful to this man, boy at that time. Am I, do, I have, do I have sympathy for him? No. Do I understand what he was feeling? Not really, but a little bit. Explain, I shall. I was incredibly hated when I was in school. I used to be chubby. Um, and just uh, kind of an awkward person. Uh, thankfully, I got into skateboarding in the mid to late 80s and found more of that crowd. And then that whole culture came up big in the 90s, and even though it's not as big now, the whole vibe of it has always permeated America to some degree. So I kind of lucked out in that a lot of the things that people thought were terrible and stupid and nerdy and not worth uh, spitting on if it was on fire became hugely popular and then died out enough now that it's not trendy, it's just real. I kind of lucked out. Um... But you talk to 13-year-old Sam, and he wasn't handling it so well. Now, did I go out shooting people? No. But let's pretend that I had that psychotic problem. 
let's pretend that maybe I wasn't able to take the things I was feeling into other directions, music, poetry, whatever. What would have happened then? I'm not blaming the victims here. I'm not blaming, because victims didn't even have anything to do with it. And I'm not blaming this girl who he cites here, who the Daily Mail hides, although I don't know why. Um, what I am going to say is it was the wrong combination of two bad things. Really, really crappy kids picking on someone that didn't fit in. And I'm not talking about normal childhood uh, rejection. I'm talking about all-out callous meanness of which there exists more of than you'd think. And a psychopathic personality meeting. That's not going to happen very often. But that is the correct views. That's what happened here. Dailymail.co.uk. The Santa Barbara killer branded a model he went to school with as an evil bitch who sparked his hatred to all women. His rambling manifesto reveals. See, they can call it rambling, and it's fine, but if we made fun of it, we, 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 we somehow are the Antichrist. Elliot Roger, who stabbed three people to death at his home, including his two roommates, before fatally shooting three more students, wrote a 141-page manifesto before his killing spree on Friday. The document in which the 22-year-old Santa Barbara City College student likened himself to God reveals how his hatred towards women began after he was teased and ridiculed by a pretty blonde girl. She was 13 and a year younger than he was when they met. He says, I hated her so much and I will never forget her, he wrote. I started to hate all girls because of this. I saw them as mean, cruel, heartless creatures who took pleasure in my suffering. Now let's pause. The fact that he's going to go out and kill somebody at the age of 22 years old means that he was a psychopath. He was also made worse by the mean, cruel, and heartless creatures that took pleasure in his suffering. Were they as bad as he says? They were probably not. But I can tell you from first-hand experience, it feels that way when you're going through it. And if you are a nutcase... That's how things like this happen. Am I saying that if she would have been wonderful to him, he would have grown up a wonderful person? No, I think he would have ended up a psychopath and killed somebody. Possibly her. But I am saying, let's remember not to be crappy to somebody. If I get off stage and I'm all covered in sweat and makeup and some girl thinks that's hot, and I've got a girlfriend, and i got to get this gear unloaded, and she's talking my head off, and uh, I'm going to be nice to that person, even though they picked the worst time to talk to me ever. Because for whatever reason, they liked me. If everybody handled things that way, then at the very least, maybe psychopaths would not be psychotic to such a quick degree as fast and maybe we could spot them sooner maybe we can get them in uh in some kind of mental health area or a prison if you will maybe we can spot it sooner if we don't do things to deliberately trigger them by being out of our way nasty people the way i was treated by girls at this time he writes especially by that evil bee sparked an intense fear of girls the funny part of this is that I had a secret crush on her. She was the first girl that I ever had a crush on, and I never admitted this to anyone. She said, the pain this person was in? Again, am I glad he's dead? I, the world's a better place, it seems, without him. I'm not saying I stick up for him. I'm saying that there is a lot of evil that leads to big evil. There's a lot of little things that I do. I, I, me, I do. I create evil in the world on accident or because of whatever reason. Maybe I'm angry that day. We all do it. But when you do it to the wrong person, it makes an already unstable person uh, Fukushima. To be teased and ridiculed by the first girl I had a crush on wounded me deeply. The world that I grew up thinking was bright and blissful was all over. I was living in a depraved world and I didn't want to accept it. And he goes on and on and on, talks about how he played video games to get away from it. And then he starts objectifying girls and sounding like a Kanye song. But 
basically, since everybody misconstrued what I said when the story was breaking, these are my thoughts on this. Now that I've actually gotten to see the story, these are my thoughts. And uh, he was a piece of filth. And to the family, uh, the families that he destroyed, I'm very sorry. To some people that led to this, don't go hang yourselves. Just remember to teach everyone else. If this video gets to you, remember to teach, treat everybody else a little bit differently than you treated him. That's all I'm saying. Am I saying you caused it? No. Uh, Kit Daniels, PrisonPlanet.com, Knives Kill, 50% in Santa Barbara Massacre. Oh, but Sam, we gotta ban the guns to prevent people like that from killing people. No. Doing a mass rampage in Santa Barbara, California late Friday night, the son of Hollywood director reportedly killed six people, half of whom he stabbed to death in his apartment. That means even though he was on his driving rampage and running people over and ramming them through his windshield and la la la, la all the stuff the nutcase did, he killed just as many people with the knife. Should you ban the knife? Do me a favor. Go to the correct views, uh, youtube.com slash the correct views, and look up Bob Costas was right. I talk about banning knives in that video. It's like the most popular video that's on my channel. So go look at it. Anti-gun media pundits and politicians, however, have downplayed this glaring fact and instead focused on the gun used in the tragedy as yet another push to eradicate the Second Amendment. What's my point? Point is, I can get nine kinds of hatred for simply being busy you've heard about everything my mom's been in the hospital forever i still do this show i don't have anybody other than christelle helping me everything i do is by myself i hadn't seen the story so i can think that the moron that did the killing was fake and i get 10 tons of hate meanwhile the corporate media and certain politicians can will and do use this tragedy to take away our guard-given rights to carry a gun, and yet I'm the evil one for not knowing the story was real. What the hell? All right, guys, under the oh my god, Sam was incredibly right, Daily Mail, DailyCaller.com. Iran's supreme leader, quote, Jihad will continue until America is no more. Now, I've got all the whiny Democrats. You don't want them to have the nuclear bomb or you don't want them to have a power plant because you think they're full of hate. You're prejudiced against them because of their religion. Then I had all the people in the liberty movement, well, America has nuclear arms, why in the world can't Iran? Depleted uranium is an evil that we did to the Middle East. It's nuclear weaponry in a nutshell for you that don't know. We used it in the uh, Middle East. We used it on our ammunitions. That was evil. Do you think it might be a good idea to keep the ability to do that out of Iran's hands when they've not only now publicly threatened Israel, and I don't mean the wipe the Israel off the map statement. I understand that was, he meant Zionism. I'm talking about the other comments. I've warned that this little bastard is going to set off a dirty bomb. I tell everybody that'll listen that this is a terrible idea, and everyone tells me how anti-freedom I am. Bam! I called this one Iran's supreme leader, supreme my ass, he can, my dear leader from North Korea, he can bite my butt. Ayatollah Ali Khomeini all but said on Sunday that negotiations over the country's illicit nuclear program are over and that the Islamic Republic's ideals include destroying America. It's a good idea for them to have a nuke plant. Those Iranians who want to promote negotiation and surrender to the oppressors and blame the Islamic Republic are, as a warmonger, in reality commit treason, Hermani told a meeting of members of the parliament. And that's according to FARS news agency. Well, just because your neighbor kicks his dog 
doesn't mean that you should be able to kick your dog. These idiot Iranians are trying to build a nuclear power plant in an earthquake zone. We already know that the earthquake is what caused the tsunami that wiped out Fukushima, and it is the earthquake that caused the meltdown, at least in one of the reactors, not the tsunami. The tsunami did not cause the meltdown in all four reactors. That's established fact. They're going to create a meltdown there. And they're going to dirty bomb the fuel. What's a dirty bomb? You take a small bit of uh, whatever uh, radioactive element you can uh, get from the fissioning process when you make your power uh, from the power plant. Take the fuel rods and uh, grenade them. Send them on a missile. Whatever. You can't cook the radi- You can't cook the radiation away. And you just pepper it all over Israel. Um, that's the kind of evil we're looking at here. And now he said it out of his own mouth. So I can't wait to see my comment line here. Well, America does evil in the world. Well, yeah, we have some more evil. Everybody get evil. Evil, evil. Idiots. Khomeini emphasized that without a combative mindset, the regime cannot reach its higher Islamic role against the oppressor's front. What if it had said... George Bush or Obama emphasized that without a combative mindset, America cannot reach its higher role against oppressors. We'd be rather outraged, wouldn't we? Then let's not forget to still be outraged when we're talking about Iran. They are all so evil. That is a correct view. Guys, I want to invite you to go to uh, the the correct view. I'll go there always. I want to invite you to go to the Arcadia Grill. Uh, They're located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. When you do, you're going to be eating some of the best food you've ever had. You're going to be chowing on ravioli. You're going to be drinking delicious drinks. And you're going to be thinking, thank God Sam from The Correct View sent me here. Uh, If you're anywhere in Ohio at all, it's worth the drive. Downtown Canton, Court Avenue, the Arcadia Grill. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, amazing fictional writer. And he's selling his stories and his poems contact him let him know that you want to read his work let him know i sent you there and uh, he'll hook you up i'm telling you are you getting engaged getting married let him know you want a poem or something you'll get some of the best work you've ever had and uh while he's not a sponsor of the show i want to give a shout out to a wonderful human being before i get to my last three stories dr brian ash dds he is not a sponsor of the show um, my, my two sponsors that I have right now, um, I don't promote them just because they're a sponsor. I believe in them. This I'm doing just because it's awesome. Dr. Brian Ash took three wisdom teeth out of, or three teeth, excuse me, out of Cristal on Memorial Day at 2 p.m. and didn't charge her any more than he would have on a regular visit. Dr. Brian Ash, DDS, that's a freebie, my friend. You are a wonderful person. Um, Guys, the American dream, mass fish death. Millions have been found dead all over the world. Now, at first, I had thought this to be a Fukushima story. Now, looking into it, um, I'm beginning to think this might be a fracking story. Ah. Millions of fish are suddenly dying all over the planet. Let's not forget the biblical uh, uh, prediction, and there came a cry from the fish gate. In fact, there have been dozens of mass fish death events reported in the past month alone. So why is this happening? Why are fish dying in unprecedented numbers all over the world? When more than six tons of fish died in Marina del Rey over the weekend, it made headlines all over the U.S., The truth is that it happened in the South California coast is just the tip of the iceberg. In 2014, mass fish die-offs have pretty much become a daily event globally. Individually, each event could perhaps be dismissed as an anomaly, but as you will see below, when they are all put together into one list, it is truly and rather stunning. The reason why so many fish are dying, it asks, is there something that connects these mass fish death events? Has something about the environment changed? The following are just a few examples of the mass fish death reports that have been coming in all over the globe. And the fact that this is happening in fresh water and is so frequently in the east is leading me to believe that this isn't just Fukushima. In April, 500,000 carp were found belly up at Kentucky's Cumberland River. There's links for all these. 
Over the weekend, uh, it says thousands upon thousands of fish died just off the California coastline. That I would like to get the radiation uh, readings on. It says officials have cleaned up six tons of dead fish, and they still have a long way to go. And it also died there with anchovies, stingrays, and octopus. It says uh, the death of approximately 35,000 fish in Minnesota is being blamed on lack of oxygen. Oh, it's normal. A recent die-off of thousands of fish in the Shark River near Belmar, New Jersey, is also being blamed on oxygen depletion. Officials in Menifee, California, are still trying to figure out what caused thousands of fish in Menifee Lake to die a few weeks ago. In the Gulf of Mexico, dolphins and sea turtles are dying in record numbers. There's so many of these, I can't even get to them. I've got to say there's at least ten more. I'll read one of them. Randomly. Last one. Also, during last September, close to tens of ten tons of dead fish were found floating near the town of Cam Camantini, Greece. We've got it in China, we've got it in Singapore, we've got it all over the place. Um, why? And there's, so, there's dates on it to go all the way down the page. Could it be from fracking? Could I don't know what it's from. But I do know that it's a very, very frightening occurrence. And friends, listen to me. Are you eating seafood? Don't do it. Um, I take fish oil and I hope it's privately raised. Uh, they keep the mercury out of it, so that's, that's another plus. Two more stories to get to before I jump off. Salon labels Benghazi cover up a conspiracy theory. This is also a stab at the Bible. I'll get to it in a minute. PJ Dub. In an article for leftist publication Salon.com, writer Arthur Goldwag characterizes the Benghazi cover up as a conspiracy theory backed by nothing more than faith, a ludicrous assertion given the recent release of emails which proved a deliberate effort to mislead on behalf of the Obama administration. How did they mislead? Uh, they blamed it on a movie, um, which maybe two people in the crowd or were out of thousands were angry about. Um, I don't think any of them were happy about it, but that's not what caused it. Um, and again, there were repeated requests for help that were ignored during uh, during this administration's great reign and it led to deaths of Americans and uh, we've done nothing but destroy Libya but listen what this jerk says I'll get to it in the second paragraph in a sophomore piece entitled Benghazi nuts anti-vaxxers birthers do they really buy their own nonsense the idiot Goldwag asks, why do people believe in ridiculous things in despite of all reason and proofs to the contrary? One of those ridiculous things is the notion that there was a cover-up surrounding the attack on the U.S. Benghazi diplomatic mission, which Goldwag labels a conspiracy theory backed by no evidence comparing belief to the Obama administration lied about the incident as akin to belief in the King James Bible. The King James Bible happens to be a historical fact. And that is not only a stab at constitutionalists and libertarians. It is a stab at Christians. Goldway goes on to equate believers in a Benghazi cover-up to those who supported Stalin's mass starvation of millions of Russians in the 1930s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't mention, it says at all, the emails released under the Freedom of Information Act earlier this month that reveals how Ben Rhodes, Obama's Deputy National Security Advisor to Strategic Communications, echoed then U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Susan Rice to underscore that these protests are rooted in an internet video and not a border failure of policy. And they could say they told the truth because there were two people that were mad about it. The fact that the result on the consulate was a terror attack and not a protest gone awry was the result of a YouTube video that was known by U.S. intelligence officials within 24 hours of the incident. Yet the Obama administration continued to blame the YouTube attack video for a week. And like I said, let's not forget that they had requested help there prior and had been ignored. Last thing I want to get to, usnews.com, the dumdy of the day. I do want to mention real quick, though, that I'm going to be running a contest now through the... Uh, I'll do it all the way to the end of the next dunce cap. How's that? Probably a week or so. I sent a dunce cap to the Department of Education. I'm going to announce this at every show. I sent a dunce cap to the uh, Department of Education for Common Core. Uh, search the correct views, uh, Common Core. 
Now, I sent dunce caps to the Department of Energy for putting radioactivity into our silverware. I've sent it to uh, police departments, and I've sent it to CPS workers that have led to the death of a child. I've even sent it to the FBI for calling the Insane Clown Posse a gang. The FBI! They took their dunce cap and their certificate of stupidity and went along their way. The Department of Education had the kahunas to mail my dunce cap back to me, return to sender. Now, I'm not going to harass them. Nope. I am going to ask everyone listening to this, you, you listening to this, you, go to the Department of Education on Facebook and write, why did you send back the correct views dunce cap that you earned? Ask them that, and then show me proof that you did it. And I will donate $5 to your favorite charity. I have to cut this off at $50. I can't go over $50. So if I get a million of you, if I get a hundred of you doing this, that's fine. But I, I cannot go over $50. This will run until the next dunce cap is up. I'm not sure how many days that'll be because, like I said, I'm going through a lot of stuff. But I will have it up for you shortly. Um, so go. What you, and again, no hateful charities. Um, no harassing the Department of Education. One comment. And uh, again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go over $50. I can't afford to do that. So don't harass them. Don't threaten them. But ask them, Department of Education, why did you send back the correct views dunce cap? Because let's face it, we do this. We, we, the whole reason this shows here is to expose stupidity. So join me. Help me. Let me know what your favorite charity is. You're not allowed to pick Nazis or somebody hateful because you're trying to be silly. Use your head. But yes, up to 50 bucks. And you can't leave many comments and get many donations. One comment. Today's dunce of the day is uh, Kentucky takes DEA to court over illegal hemp seed seizure. The DEA stealing ideas from the, uh, the Tea Party who want to take the water away from the cooling system that runs the uh, NSA spying um, electronics. Kentucky officials say the DEA uh, is breaking the law in an attempt to illegally ruin the state's industrial hemp pilot program. The Bluegrass State legalized industrial hemp in 2013, and the federal farm bill signed by President Barack Obama in January allows states to grow it for research. Industrial hemp superficially resembles marijuana, but as much lower concentrations of psychoactive THC. It has been used for centuries for making rope, including uh, under the Washington administration, clothes and other items, but growing it was illegal for decades in the U.S. Earlier this month, the DEA seized 250 pounds of hemp seeds en route to the University of Kentucky from Italy. The package was first flagged by U.S. Customs and Border Research. It's ridiculous. Its hemp is not being grown in the U.S. How are we going to grow it without seeds? So they're taking the seeds away from something that doesn't get you high because it's related to something that gets you high and they don't want you to make rope out of it. Do you believe that? No, neither do I. They get the dunce cap and the dunce of the day award, I should say. And the dumdy, the golden dumdy. But um, more important than that, this is about keeping the current manufacturers of rope and paper and whatever making tons and eliminating hemp from being in the marketplace. That's what it's about, because there's a lot of, uh, like, the same big money that's tied into everything is tied into this. you got to remember that about 500 people own almost everything that you buy and sell in the world. That's fact long before I took the air. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. Thank you for watching, friends. Do me a favor, hit share. Go to themediaspeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Subscribe if you can, and if you would like to donate, go to thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Good night, friends, and God bless.